Hi, this is James McMillan. I'm going to talk about Amazon QuickSight, which is a cloud-based BI service to create data visualizations and insights onto your data very quickly and easily. Um, some of the advantages is that it's scalable. It can scale up to 10,000 plus users very quickly. It can access multitudes of different data sources, um, um, import data directly from CVS files and flat files, um, and it can create and embed dashboards into different forms of different applications. Um, the pricing for QuickSight, you know, they have an enterprise edition, which is based on authors and readers. And then they have a standard edition, which is based just on authors and people that are, you know, creating dashboards. And um, pricing is actually um, not too bad. Um, it's, it's really kind of dependent upon your use of uh, how much data space that you're using for this SPICE technology and the capacity that you're using. And SPICE is a tool that is... Um, access or used by ADA, AWS to speed up the um, database for visualizations. Um, so in order to create a visualization obviously you need to have data and uh, the uh, um, QuickSight accesses um, all of the AWS data sources, the um, standard uh, RDS sources as well as the non-SQL also access data through the um, S3 bucket and for this project, I chose um, to build an RDS um, database, which was a MarinaDB instance called Final Project. And, uh, you know, it was set up very, you know, standard, standard setup. The only thing I found um, that had to be done for QuickSight was that for QuickSight, the data has to be publicly accessible and has to have a security group with CIDR block ranges that are open basically to the world. Um, this isn't documented. And uh, within the AWS um, QuickSight um, uh, documentation, and uh, it really kind of opens a potential security breach or uh, security issue for uh, for QuickSight. And I'm sure there's ways to overcome it, but there's very little documentation that uh, that explains why. Um, within that uh, database instance that I was just talking about I, in MarinaDB, I created several different uh, database tables. Um, one table for each of the different um, cloud vendors, which is daily stock price quotes for um, say Amazon, Google, IBM, Microsoft, and then um, a different uh, data source or, or data table called Telco Churn, which is a, another analysis that I'll um, explain with uh, um, why I would do this. Um, the code to create this was very, rather straightforward. Um, you know, we had uh, all the inserts as well as the, you know, create the tables and the inserts for the different databases or the different tables. And then for the telco churn, the creating of the table and the inserts of, of that data. Um, once you have the database set up, you can go back over to, you know, Amazon and you can go into uh, QuickSight. Now, QuickSight, when you launch it, it will actually take you out of the AWS console, console and um, you have to have your own user ID and, and password set up for QuickSight. You have to, it's, it's separate outside of uh, standard AWS. Now, uh, Ada, uh, QuickSight will recognize your database that, that is set up over in um, AWS. And so you can see that final project that MarinaDB is set up and I can choose that as my uh, database that I want to work with um, give it a name. Um, I'm going to call it just new database source. And then um, I'm going to choose that final project. It has to be public. And I have to put in my username. Um, and my password for that database. And then I can create that data source. And then it will ask me which table I want to start with. And I'm going to select the Amazon table. And then it will ask me if I want to use that SPICE technology for quicker anal analytics, which speeds up the visualization process. And I'm going to click on Visualize. And it will take me and I will be able to build my first um, visualization using this data. And I want to you know, add in Amazon's uh, price growth. And then I need to add in the date field so I can see it over time. And I can now see that I have Amazon stock price growth over you know, a course of a year. Now, really what I wanted to be able to do was, you know, show, you know, stock price growth, you know, compared to other um, vendors. So I need to go back and edit my data source. 
and um, load in some of those additional tables that I had. So I'm going to load in Google, um, IBM, and Microsoft. And then I need to join those tables by doing um, uh, a join. And you can see here that they let you do, or Amazon QuickSight lets you do various different types of joins. But I'm going to just do an inner join because I know the data is um, for the same time period. And uh, it's as simple as, as just choosing what you're going to join on and uh, click and apply and now all your data is joined together and you're ready to go you can also create variables in here there's lots of other things that you can do to manipulate your data for your visualizations within here once I'm done I can click save and visualize and now all that additional data that I added um, is here for me to to work with and I can go in and I can add in now I can add in Google's um, stock price growth, I can add in IBM's stock price growth to the visualization, and I can add in Microsoft's stock price growth to the visualization. I can change the, uh, the title of the uh, visualization. Um, the top cloud vendors. Um, I can change um, and format where I want the legend to be. I'm going to put it up at the top. just makes it look a little bit bigger or a little bit uh, more professional by putting it there and you have the legend there. So now I have kind of something that I'm really kind of ready to share with everybody and I can publish this dashboard, give it a new name. And once I hit publish, it will give me an option to choose who I'm going to publish it to. And uh, the people that I have options to publish, publish it to are those that are in my uh, QuickSight uh, user group that are set up as, as, uh, as potential uh, people that are users. So I hit share. And once I hit share, then I can go over to my email. And I'll get an email from QuickSight. And that visualization will be ready for me to, to view. I hit view. And it comes up. And uh, now, I'm vis uh, now I'm viewing that um, visualization just on a totally separate web, uh, web link um, outside of uh, standard QuickSight. So that's how you can share and uh, embed these uh, visualizations into different types of applications. Now I'm going to go back to... Uh, to uh, to quick site and show you another analysis that I built um, using the data visualization package, which was on that churn analysis, and this was telecommunication churn and trying to understand what was driving churn um, for the telecommunication pro uh, provider. So this is contract month to month. So people that have a contract month to month um, compared to churn, you can see that. Um, they are far more likely to churn than those that are um, um, that do not have a contract month to month. And then you can see something like uh, somebody that has uh, using payment for a you know payment method of electronic check um, are far more likely to churn than those that are not using um, uh, electronic check. And then if you look at um, you know, a uh, tenure group, uh, tenure is how long they've been with the telecommunication pri provider. Um, these are the lowest tenured, and these are the ones that are the highest tenured. You can see that um, as your tenure grows up, you're less likely to churn. Over here in um, the highest tenure group, 93% um, are, are not going to churn, and 53% um, or 52% um, in the zero bucket, so the brand new customers have a high potential to churn. Um, and then if you look at something like contract for two years, so these people that are under contract for two years, those that are under contract for two years have a very, very low likelihood to churn. Only 97% um, of them are going to stay um, compared to, you know, 65% um, that are, are going to stay for, um, for those that uh, uh, have a two-year contract. And then one-year contract um, ever has a very similar, you know, pattern as the uh, as the two-year. 
So you can quickly use data visualizations like I was showing here to find patterns in the data and understand um, what's, what's happening in the data that, uh, that you're looking at and look for, look for patterns and, uh, and try to understand uh, what's, uh, what's happening within the data that you're trying to analyze. Um, and just like I you know, demonstrated before, I can then you know, share this analysis, I can publish this dashboard, um, and I can call it telco, telco churn analysis, um, publish it, and uh, you know I'm the only one that's in my user group right now, but I'm going to publish it to myself. Once that's published, then I can actually you know you know you can see I can click out of here. And uh, I can go into my email, and I got another email from the QuickSight team, and that dashboard that I just published is ready to view. And uh, and I can see that you know I, I can see my 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 visualizations and my um, analysis that I created. Now, in comparison to QuickSight and some of the other um, tools that are out there. I think the biggest difference that I found with QuickSight and to some of the primary um, competitors that they have is the types of visuals that they have. One of the primary competitors, um, if you think about um, the different uh, data visualization packages, is a package called Tableau. Tableau is one of the, you know, the, the top, if not the top, um, data visualization packages. And uh, you know, what uh, what QuickSight is missing is QuickSight does not have very uh, many uh, types of visualizations that you can create, um, and that's what this is showing here. You can create different types of visualizations. This is a, a scatter plot. This is a tree map, a, a pie chart, you know, area line chart. You know, different types of horizontal pivot tables, um, points on the map. It does mapping. Where what QuickSight is uh, the the two or three that QuickSight is, is missing that's incredibly important is one is a histogram that you normally would create on um, data which is used quite a bit in data analytics and box um, box plots which is another one that's used quite a bit in data analytics um, and then um, uh, Tableau actually has the ability to cluster your data and do a little bit more heavy analytics um, on your data and uh, the third thing that uh, Tableau has that QuickSight is missing is uh, to do a little bit more scripting and create um, variables from um, the variables. You can do, you can create variables and combine variables together within QuickSight, but it's not as easy and, um, and you don't have as many features as the uh, top end package, which is Tableau. Though. However, Tableau is a thick client. You have to install it on your desktop. Um, and then you know you publish to it to a server, and the server is a local server that's within your um, in your corporate environment. So it doesn't have the scalability that um, that QuickSight does. Um, but uh, QuickSight really needs to boost its capabilities of building visualizations before I think it can become a true competitor to. Um, to some of the top packages that are out there, in, uh, including Tableau. So with that, um, I hope you enjoyed the introduction to QuickSight, and um, have a great uh, afternoon.